Take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to Psalm chapter 16. Title of the message this morning, Brother Austin, I'm glad I don't. I am glad I don't. Psalm chapter 16. Oh, bless God, all he's going to do is talk about bad things. Not this morning, not this morning. I will give you a break today. <laughs> oh, praise God, I can be bad all week. Amen, amen. Psalm chapter 16, we're going to all stand together and read verse 9. Psalm chapter 16, verse 9. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalm chapter 16, verse 9, the Bible says, Therefore, my heart is glad. Therefore, my heart is glad. But when's the last time you felt that? Therefore, my heart is glad. And my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Can you imagine being so in tune with the thing God wants us to have that even our flesh is at rest in hope? Wouldn't that be, well, isn't God good? I'm going to tell you what a wonderful song this morning. Then Jesus came. That should spark us to realize a difference maker that Christ really is in each life. Not just for the singer, not just for the preacher, not just for the deacons. He's a difference maker in every life. Amen. Boy, what I cannot wait to preach. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Brother Austin, lead us in prayer. And you may be seated. Thank you again for being here today. What a good crowd, good spirit. I'm almost happy to be in church. Amen. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 9 gives you that wonderful word, therefore. I love that word because it means that you should have read what came before because that's why you have the therefore. It's that's what it's there for. Amen. So if you read the scriptures beforehand, I've got four things that we're going to go over. Shouldn't take very long at all. I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep the teenagers awake this morning. So we're going to go to Psalm chapter 16 and we're going to read verse 1. The Bible says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My soul said this now. How wonderful is that? Even when your head might not have said it, your soul said, thou art my Lord. My goodness extended, Lord, my goodness extended not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. I am so glad I don't have to look for another God. Now, you may not think that's a big deal, but let's put it to where it's at. There's a million different religions out in the world. There's a million different routes that the devil is trying to take those that are out there. I'm so glad that I got put on to the right God, the only God, the true God, right away in my life. I'm so glad that I don't have to look for another God. I'm not looking for Muhammad. I'm not looking for Buddha. I'm not looking for Islam. I'm not looking for take your pick. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's the right God. I'm glad I don't have to look for another God. Can you imagine having to go through life not sure that you've got the right God? Can you imagine having to go through life not absolutely certain that that's the God that's going to take you to heaven someday? Can you imagine not being sure that the Bible is real? It is truly amazing to me that it is a, a debate today over what the word of God is. It's truly an amazing debate to me today. I'm so glad I don't have to look for another God. He gave me the perfect Bible, the perfect word. I don't have to search for him anywhere else. Bless God, he resides right in here. And I'm very thankful I don't have to look for another God. My soul lets me know that he's the right God. My spirit lets me know that he's the right God. The truth lets me know that he's the right God. His perfection lets me know he's the right God. The earth and the way it's kept by him lets me know he's the right God. Bless God, the oceans don't come down their border without his permission. I'm so glad I serve the right God and I don't have to look for another. I would hate to be searching today. And by the way, there are a lot of folks that are searching. That's where we come in. Say amen to me. Because we've got the true God. We've got the right God. We don't have to search for a God. But we have to help those that are searching for God today. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. He needs to be introduced to a crowd that has no tomorrow. 
He needs to be introduced to a crowd that needs to know his love, needs to know his compassion, needs to know his salvation. I'm so glad I've got the true God. I want to make sure I pass that on to others. I'm so glad today I don't have to wander around lost. I'm so glad today I don't have to wander around seeking. I'm so glad today I don't have to wander around not knowing. I'm so glad the one thing I've got settled, boy, he is the only God. I am so glad I don't have to look for another God. Thou art my Lord. I don't have to look for another. Look at what the Bible says. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Look at what the Bible says. Why are they so upset that seek after Allah? Why are they so upset that seek after the Catholic God? Why are they so upset that those that seek after Buddha? I don't care what kind of gods you put in front of them. Their sorrows are multiplied. Why? Because they don't have the true God. And I'm so excited. I don't have to look. I've already got him. I can go through every day knowing he's by my side. I can go through every day without having to worry about him being gone. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm so glad that I've got the right God. And I'm so glad I don't have to look for another. Look at this now. The Lord, verse 5, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lions are fallen to me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. Number two, I am so glad I don't have to worry about my heavenly retirement. <laughs> you know all the religions in the world that say you got to lay up stuff to go to heaven? You're buried with tools. I don't want to be buried with tools. I want to leave my work here. Bless God. How many people are buried with food? I don't want to be buried with earthly food. Are you crazy? I'll go ahead and wait for the heavenly manna. Thank you. If they buried with pictures of loved ones, I understand that. I like that a little bit too. But I'd just go ahead and rather see them face to face in heaven for an eternity. Right. Say amen to me. I don't need a picture of somebody when I get to see him. Bless God. If you have a family and all the folks are saved, hey, listen, I'm going to get to see my nephew the rest of his ever loving eternity <laughs> as he frowns. Man, my wife and I get to be together for an eternity. Say amen to me. I'm so glad that we're both saved. I'm so glad that I don't have to worry about my godly inheritance. Man, my eternity is already taken care of. If you don't know him as Savior, I understand that salvation gets you out of a place called hell. We'll get there in a moment. But I'm so glad at what God has prepared for us. We, 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 I have not seen nor ear heard the thing God has prepared for his people. God loves you so much that he set the streets of gold up just for you. Oh, bless God, he set it up for Moses. Mm, yeah, and you. Oh, he set it up for Joshua. Yeah, and you. Joseph, yeah, and you. I go to repair a place for you. That where I am, there ye may be also. I'm sure glad I don't have to look for another God. And I'm sure glad I don't have to worry about my eternal inheritance. If heirs, then joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I wonder if Jesus Christ owns anything. Well, preacher, I've heard all this before. Then you better be happier than this. Good Lord. How's your mortgage payment coming? I hate it every month, 15th or 28th, whatever it is. I got to make a mortgage payment every month. Well, in heaven, <clears throat> it's already paid for. Well, bless God, I'm so worried about the water quality and the bills that come in. <laughs> bless God, we get to heaven, the living water's there, and it's already been paid for. Oh, bless God, I'm so worried about the weather. <laughs> it's so funny. Every seven seconds on the radio in the morning, you hear weather, weather, weather. Look outside! <laughs> it's raining. If you like rain, I believe you'll have rain in heaven where you're at. If you like snow, <laughs> you're going to be on the other side of heaven from me. Bless God, I'm going to tell you this. If you like sunshine, if you like palm trees, if you like the beach, that's going to be my end of town. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'm so glad I don't have to worry about my inheritance. My inheritance has already been paid for. I may not get an inheritance down here. Good Lord, my family's never had anything. And I promise you they're not fitting to get anything. 
But I know this, I've got a God in heaven that's already got my inheritance paid for. I go to repair a place for you. I'm not sure it's going to be a mansion. In my father's house are many mansions. Didn't say they're all mansions. But I bet you that house ain't no fixer-upper. I'm not going to have to worry about tiles falling off the walls. I tell you, I'd rather have a Maytag box in heaven than have a mansion in hell. I'll tell you that with all of my heart. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry every single day. Bless God, if you do good, then a good spot in heaven will be set up. Hogwash. Hogwash. God's got a place for you. He knows what you're going to do. That's how good God is. He knows how you're going to be down here. He knows how you're going to finish. I hope and pray you finish strong. But understand that God already knows how you're going to finish. Boy, that's a humbling thing to think, isn't it? And he's already got his place all picked out for you. I hope I got a beachfront property. No pain. Can you imagine not having to worry about a leave? I take a leave like it's candy. The doctor gets mad at me. You can't take a leave to give you cancer. Everything gives you cancer. You should see what I eat, man. <laughs> Do fried foods give you cancer? Yeah, probably. Well, I'm going to be loaded with it because I'm loaded with fried food. Oh, you're just, that's, that's not taking it serious enough. Hey, listen to me. You know, sometimes we need to get a little bit happy. We, we fret so much. We worry and fret so much. The Bible says, if by strength we can live to 70 years. And listen, I don't know how long you're going to live. I mean, Grandma Sue's 150. I don't know. She's not even here and I'm picking on her. That's bad. I'll pick on Marie. Marie's 125. Pray for her. Pray for her. She she's, has some health. She, pray for her. She needs uh, prayer for her health. Make sure you pray. I'm so glad that heaven's already settled. Now, I don't believe, I believe God knows who's coming. And, and by the way, it's amazing to me. Calvinism is making a, a resurgence. I, I'm, so, I'm so boggled by that. I, we beat that back pretty good, I thought, in the last decade or so. But Calvinism, you say, I don't know what Calvinism is. It's real simple. Calvinism is a lazy Christianity. What's that mean, preacher? You don't have to go soul winning. You don't have to tell anybody about Jesus. If they're going to get saved, they're going to get saved. Now, let me help you a little bit. God knows who's going to get saved. God knows everything. You can't tell, oh, God doesn't know. <laughs> God knows. God knows everybody's going to get saved. But we don't have that list. God has it, but we don't. So when the Bible says go, the Calvinists have to hurdle that. Go into all nations. Tell them about Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel unto every creature. Because some of them, let's face it, when we get there, they're creatures. To every creature. So what happens is this. The Calvinists say, well, we don't need to do that because God knows everything. God knows that if they're going to get saved, they're going to, why? Because they're the elect. Go ahead and study the elect. I double dog dare you. The elect are people God knows who they are. And I'm saved, which means I are one of them. But understand this. We don't know who that is. And God's told us to tell them. I'm so glad that's settled. I'm so glad that's settled. I'm so glad that somebody told my wife, boy, she dug through the pictures. We were looking for pictures for my cousin's funeral. Oh, bless God. Pray for that family. I'm 49 years old. We looked through it and she found a picture of the fellow that led me to Christ. Ron Brown. He's a goofy looking fella. It takes a goofy looking fella to lead a goofy looking fellow to the Lord. But he led me to Christ. I love that picture. I love that picture. Now, God had him ordained to tell me about him. But Ron didn't know that. He didn't know that. The folks that we went around and talked to yesterday, Joe, Brother Joel and I went around, we knocked on doors yesterday, and a fellow came to the door, cracks me up. He says, he says, <laughs> how you doing? He says, well, I don't know, it depends. <laughs> depends on what? He said, uh, what kind of church? He looks at the track, oh, Baptist church. I'm sure they're used to the J-dubs because we don't do our job. He says, well, you allow drinking in your church? <laughs> he said, do you drink? And I said, I used to, but I drink from a different fountain now. He says, 
Well, do you allow it? I said, well, I'm sure there are some that do in my church, but I don't want them to. And the Bible teaches against that. But if you're drinking in here today, I still want you to be in church. Well, you have a good day then. Amen. He kept the track. Praise God. I'm so glad that I don't have to look for another God. Sometimes I think we take that for granted. Amen. I just think we take that for granted. That we, we, boy, we have been introduced to Jesus Christ, the only God, the only one. And we have him right off the bat. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so glad that my eternal inheritance I don't have to worry about. It's already taken care of. How many, and don't raise your hand, but think about this. How many stress and fret over retirement? Think about that. It's a going concern today. How am I going to retire? And, and that's hard because older folk, you have a hard time making it fixed income. I understand all of that. It's, it's, you got to set it up. Aren't you glad that when you die, it's all taken care of? It's waiting on you. And by the way, I don't care if you saved $18 million. You don't have any money saved up like you have in heaven. Help me now. I'm so glad that I don't have to worry about a heavenly retirement because the Lord is my inheritance. Number three, look at this. The Lord is a portion of my inheritance. Verse five, verse six, the lines are falling to me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I am so glad, number three, I don't have to fret over earthly decisions. You know, we can walk around in life blind. We have no idea. And we don't know what's coming from God. We don't know what's coming day by day to act as if we do. No, I believe that's just foolishness. But I will tell you this. I know that God is in control. We worry about the circus that has been this judge's nomination. What a circus. We're a laughing stock all across the world today. We're a laughing stock. I'm glad he got in. From what I understand, he got in. I'm glad of that. Boy, that made the Democrats mad. But understand this, I'm, whether he got in or not, God's in control. We say so much, bless God, I've heard more conversations about politics. I've had more conversation about the things that are going on in this world. Understand this, if we get more of Christ, we'll get less of the world. God's got it under control. I don't have to fret. God knows what's coming. He knows what's coming. He's got this world under control. Look, I don't have to look for another God. I've got the right one. I don't have to worry about what's coming in eternity. That's already settled. I don't have to worry about earthly decisions. Let God have your reins. Praise God. He knows what's coming. Don't you think he's better at steering than you are? God is my co-pilot. Hogwash, that's a wrong seat. I tell you right now, I'd rather have him go ahead and take the wheel. I'll sit back and coach by the restrooms. Because to be real honest with you, God sees everything. He knows everything. He's omnipotent, omniscient. He's omnipresent. There's nothing that's occurred to him why he's God. And he knows exactly what direction you're headed. So head in his direction. I don't have to worry about earthly decisions. I want to make the decisions that God would have me to make. I'll tell you what you do. Well, boy, this would be wonderful. Think about this, parents. How would you like it if your kid came to you? And Jimmy never sits here anymore. How would you like it if your kid came to you? And I'm still picking on Jimmy. I don't care. Jimmy, how would you like it if your kid came to you and said, Hey, look, I'm no good on my own. Daddy, Mama, I'm giving you my heart. Think about that for a moment. I'm giving you my heart. Help me to make the right decisions. All growing up. Man, I told my dad, you're old. I told my dad, what do you know? I told my dad, I'll take care of it. May I help you a little bit? Not one decision I made without my dad's permission worked out. Not one. I'm going to tell you, my dad is one of the greatest men I know. And all he wanted was the best for me. You look at me and you listen to me well. My dad only wanted the best for me. And when I allowed him to make my decisions for me, to help me, 
it always turned out right. Help now li you look listen to me now. You would love your children to come to you and say, Hey, listen. And by the way, parents, you need to take a proactive role in making your child's decision. Please, Daddy, take my heart. I, I, I don't, I'm not good with myself. Daddy, you know more than I do. Oh, my soul, wouldn't that be wonderful? You know more than I do. I want you to go ahead and you take my heart and help me to make good decisions. And we would love our kids to say that, amen? Well, wait a minute. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about having the right God. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about my eternity. If I'll study my Bible and I'll pray unto my heavenly Father and I'll give him my life, I'm so glad I don't have to worry about earthly decisions. I'm so glad. I don't know how many times my dad told me, son, you go down that path, it's going to end badly. And, and I was dumb enough to say, yeah, well, And it is truly amazing how, guess what it turned out? <laughs> just, Dad was right. Boy, I hate that. I, Dad, I hate that. And my dad would sit there and wait for me at nighttime. Wait and wait and wait. Two, three in the morning. He'd have to get up at five to go to work. Sit and wait for his boy. Because he loved me. And I would come in, not listening to what he said, making the wrong decisions. What did God I'd have given him my heart back then? Let him help me. You know what? The Lord wants the best for you. He wants the best for you. I want you to think with me, all the decisions. Had anybody ever made a bad decision? Don't put your hands up. <laughs> after you got through with the aftermath of a bad decision, you ever ask yourself, would God have had me do that? You know, if we would ask that question before we made the decision, maybe we wouldn't have to worry about earthly decisions. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about earthly decisions when I let God make them for me. Amen? Number four, continuing to read on. I will bless the Lord. Who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to seek corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I'm so glad I don't have to suffer in a place called hell. I'm, I'm thrilled for heaven. Glory to God, I'm thrilled for heaven. But understand this, we're saved from a place called hell. Hell is real. It burns every day. When people die and they don't know him, they go there. And if you've never asked him to save you, you're getting ready to split hell wide open. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You don't know what's going to come. I know, listen, I know 49 years old, my cousin lived a troubled life, but at least he had that part of his life settled. He died that day, went to sleep, opened his eyes, and he saw the face of his Savior. I hope and pray you've got that settled. Listen, I don't care what I do here. I don't care my behavior. I don't care the decisions I make if they're wrong. I'm glad that there's going to be a day that I go to heaven because I don't have to suffer in a place called hell. And in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torment. It's real. Hell is something that burns forever. It enlarges itself. Why? Because it's got to make room for more folks. Hell was never designed for you. It was never designed for me. It was never designed for a sinner. Hell was designed for the devil and his angels, but we sometimes see people can't wait to go there. Why? Because they don't have the luxury of the right God. They don't have the luxury of an eternal inheritance already taken care of. They're seeking something that is not real. 
And eventually they're going to open up their eyes being in that place called hell. And we look blithely on. Are you ready for one of your family members to go there? Help me now. Oh, we love it that we're going. We love it that we're going to heaven. Oh, bless God. Woohoo! I get to go to heaven someday. All the rest of y'all can go to hell, but I'm going to heaven. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want one of these children to go to hell. Not one. Not one. Even the ugly ones. I don't want one of you to go to hell. You look at me and listen to me. It doesn't matter where you're from. This is the God's honest truth. You need to hear this now. Don't you let somebody, well, if you was rich, you'd go to heaven. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, if compared to heaven, we're all poor. You don't have to be good to go to heaven. Every one of you are good, though, I know. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter uh, where you've been, where you are, or where you're going. Heaven has paid for all of it for every one of you. All Jesus did is come down to this earth. But that wasn't enough. Then he went ahead and lived. Then he went ahead and died. Then he went ahead and rose again. All for you. Can you imagine that? All for you. And by the way, this isn't a joke. This isn't something that's not real. This isn't something you just hear in church. This is, we found the true God. Here he is. He doesn't want you to go to hell. And he made a way. That way was his son. And I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I found the way. Can you imagine one of these sweet children going to a place called hell because they wouldn't accept the Lord? It's not, you don't have to bring me money unless you got a lot of it. You don't have to bring me money. You don't have to uh, come to church every day of your life, although I wish you would. You don't have to uh, do the right things. All you got to do is accept him. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. It's because humans got involved that we've got JWs. It's because humans got involved that we've got Catholics. It's because humans got involved uh, that we've got uh, Charles Taze Russell and the Mormons and, uh, and, the, and the, uh, uh, Joseph Smiths and every religion you can imagine. It's because humans got involved that we've got Islam. You ought not talk about those religions. Oh, yes, I should. Because there's only one true God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man. I, how many? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So should I talk about Allah? Should I talk about Charles Tate? Should I talk? Yeah, I should, because there's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through him. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell, because hell is real. The fire's not quenched. The worm dieth not. It's a place where you don't get any water. It's a place of eternal torment. Stop talking about hell. Oh, no, it needs to be real to you. You need to know about it. Because there are people that we have known that are there. There's people that are still there today. The rich man is still there. And forever will be. How would it feel to know that you sat in a church service unsaved? This is no joke. This is not a time for joking. You sat in a church service unsaved. Trying to make salvation something it isn't. Trying to doubt God's plan. It's either all paid for or it's not paid for at all. It's paid for. It's already done. All you got to do is accept it. That's easy believism. Then why do so many people have a hard time with it? Help me now. Put any title on it you want. He paid it all. And if he paid it all, all I got to do is ask him to save me. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead and turn 17 cartwheels, say 18 Hail Marys, go to 16 different churches. Is that what it says? Get your life right. Get clean. Get better. Give money. It says none of those things. And you're glad, but you're still tithing. And I'm getting a baptism. It's got nothing to do with that. Why, well, preacher, why are you telling us? Because you need to know it. 
over and over and over, you need to know it. Hell is not some place you have to go. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about hell. I'm never going to see it. I'm never going to be there. It's never going to singe my clothes. It's never going to put the smell of smoke on me. Why? Because I don't have to look for another God. I've got the right one. Verse 10 again. Thou, not, thou wilt not live, leave my soul in hell. Boy, I'll get it someday. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Why is that in there? This is just a side note, a little coupon. Why is that in there? For thou wilt, though, for neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. If you get saved and we could lose our salvation, I didn't have this plan. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Eternal security is real. Amen. Just as real as heaven. Right. What's eternal security? Kids, it's like this. You ask the Lord to save you, it's done. He saves you, and then you can't get lost the rest of your life. There's nothing you can, what if I become a murderer? Well, when you get to heaven, ask Moses. Well, what if I'm a bad person? When you get to heaven, ask Paul. Well, what if I commit adultery and do the wrong thing? Go ahead and ask David. Hell and heaven and you being a good person has nothing to do with eternity. It's he's paid the price. He's paid the price. I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and show you the Bible. Turn to John. I didn't have this plan, praise God. I didn't have this plan. Jesus says, you better tell him, dummy. I let him call me dummy. You can't, though. John, chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 27. Once you get saved, you become sheep. Sheep of the great and wonderful shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Which is what we ought to do, amen? And I give unto them eternal life. Who's giving it? Jesus is. I give unto them eternal life. That's not half life. That's not part of life. That's not a little bit of life or a lot of life. That's eternal life. And they shall what? Help me now. They shall what? They shall never perish. Look at this now. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This is Jesus talking now. You're in his hand. You get saved. You're in his hand. You're not in Allah's hand, Buddha's hand. You're in his hand. In his hand. Now listen, I'm not the strongest fellow in the world, but if I close up my fist around something, you're going to have a hard time opening it up. Can you imagine your soul in Jesus' hand? Can you imagine your eternity in the hand of a Savior that loves you more uh, so much that he came down here to earth to die for you? You think he's going to let you loose? But I want to draw your attention to the word any. And this is where it gets really good. This is where it takes man out of the equation. You believe in Christ. You're a part of that any man that cannot pluck you out of his hand. I want you to see this again. Look at this with me. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You can't pluck you out of his hand. What if I commit murder? What if I do bad? What if I do? You're, <laughs> you're a sinner. He's paid for every sin. Does that give us the right to go out and do those things? No. And we should do our best because God loves you and died for you. You should do your best to live a good life. But understand this. I couldn't get myself out of hell or out of heaven. I couldn't get myself out. I believed in him. He's got me. He's holding on to me. I'm not holding on to him. He's holding on to me. And I never have to worry about getting myself out of heaven. I never have to worry about going to hell because he's taken care of me. Goes a little further. My father, verse 29, which gave them me is greater than all. And how many? Help me now. How many? 
no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Jesus puts you in his hand. <laughs> so wonderful. He puts you in his hand, every one of you. If you're saved, he puts you right in your hand, right here. Then his dad's hand wraps around his. I and my Father are one. And if you can imagine the Holy Spirit wrapping itself all around this too, can you really imagine a way that you could get out of God's hands. I, I cannot stand or tolerate religions that teach less than eternal security. I, I can't understand it. I, I'm glad it's not, baptism's not required. I, I'm glad that living a clean life is not required because I'm going to tell you with all of my heart there's folks that live in the desert and never see water. There's folks that are not going to live a clean life, but I'm glad that Jesus took care of all of that. I want to live a clean life. I want to live a good life. I want him to make my decisions for me. But bless God, uh, my good life is not contingent on my eternal security. To do so lets the Holy One see corruption. Bless God, I can save you. I just can't keep you. I'm glad I don't have to worry about being kept then this thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore last one and i'm all done i am so glad i don't have to look beyond christ for joy i am so glad I don't have to seek my joy or pleasures in the world. I am so glad that in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Remember I told you joy is not an emotion. Joy is not something that is fleeting. Joy is something you can have in the midst of a storm. Joy is something you can have in the midst of tragedy. Joy is something that you can only get through him. I believe Christians ought to be the most joyful folks in the whole wide world. Why, preacher? <laughs> because we don't have to worry about trying to find the right God. Oh, we don't have to worry about the eternal inheritance. <laughs> we don't have to worry about making the right decisions. Oh, bless God, as long as we allow him to make them, they'll always be right. I don't have to worry about going to a place called hell so glad of that and I don't have to worry about looking to get myself back out of hell I'm so glad it's eternally secure and I'm so glad that while I'm living here I can have joy unspeakable and full of glory I'm so glad I don't have to worry about those things isn't God so good amen let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer dear Lord we love you we thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Oh, God, it's so good to revisit these paths. It's so good, Lord, to just hear these things again, all the simple and the basic and foundational truths. You're so wonderful. Lord God, let us not forget how good we truly have it. Lord, I could be seeking blindly for something that doesn't exist. But bless God, I have you. I could be making decisions on my own. But I have you. I could be worried about going to a place called hell. But I have you. I could be worried, Lord, every day about eternal security. But Lord, I have you. I could be worried about inheritance and worried about where I'm going to go. But... Lord, I have you. I'm so glad I have you. Lord, please help us today. If there's one in this room that doesn't know you as Savior, Lord, today's the day. Oh, I'll be embarrassed. You know what? I would not let embarrassment send me to hell. I, I, I would not. There's some folks here that love you so much, they just want to see you get saved. Lord, please help us. If there's one today that doesn't know you, to let them know you today. You're the true God. You're the true God. You're the only one. 